Welcome to Meadow Valley, viewers. Back to one. You're about to see the anatomy of a sequence, and specifically, the most complicated sequence in a complicated movie. This set was particularly challenging all the way through because I think in the script it was sort of the least defined what it was. Exterior, Metal Valley. It didn't say exterior, a junkyard, or exterior, processing plant. It said Metal Valley. So that alone is this mythical idea. Tom has managed to create uh, an environment that made sense. What we found here is an old aggregate company. Parts of it are still functioning. There's so much existing structure, you know, for all the millions of dollars that a movie might get, I couldn't build that kind of production design. The reason we have a gap here is because uh, we'll build a miniature and do set extensions to fill in here to really give it a grand sense. So tonight we're going to spend our whole night shooting in what we call Robo Alley. And as if this wasn't a hard enough sequence, we've decided to add pouring rain to it as well and uh, make our lives just a little bit more miserable, but make our movie just a little bit better. On is back on set. Start locking it up, please. Get it quiet. We're getting everybody in position. Pictures up. Starting the rain. Here it comes, guys. I'm Joe DiGaetano. I'm the special effects coordinator. Joe, you gotta get more rain on this side okay. here. The rain that we have to put on a set for it to be photographed properly has to be heavier than normal rain. So it has to be large drops. We've got about 80,000 gallons of water spread over four areas that we've been heating to make sure that they're warm. Are you heating that for us? Yeah. Uh, God bless Hollywood. Mr. Joey. 96? Could you do some bubbles with it? Just the jacuzzi effect would be good. Ooh. We're set, sir. Roll camera, please. Sounds big. Ready and action. There it is. What are we looking for? Anything. Anything I could use to put a fighting bot together. Hey, look. What? Do you miss it? Careful, you're on a cliff. Cut. Good, we got that. Moving on to close up to the road. I'm Garrett Warren, I'm the stunt coordinator for the movie. We are setting up the sequence that leads to the slide Three. down Meadow Valley Hill. Three, two, one, go. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. That was perfect. That's our shot. Go to the position, here we go. Ready and action. Ready and action. Ready and action. Careful, you're on a cliff. Oh, that's a long way down. If you fell, you definitely yeah. jumped. Yeah. 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 I think he's got it. Ah, uh, he does. He does his own stuff. That was very good. So here we are, another night at Metal Valley. Um, walking up what you can see is a man-made structure. There's no way we could shoot this on a real hillside because we have to control the speed of our boy sliding down this mud slide. So we needed controllability, and the question was whether to shoot it on a soundstage or to build a set outside. And once I added rain to this sequence, it made doing it inside much more complicated because all that water needs somewhere to go. So we built a mountain outside amidst the mountains. You are accommodating not only the structural integrity of building a six-story structure, temporary, that has to hold quite a bit of weight, not just of the set, but of the cast and crew that work on it. But it has to accommodate in excess of 20,000 gallons of water being dumped by the rain bars. Camera test rehearsal with no rain. Three, two, one, action! Doubling kids yeah. for a living is hilarious. You know, a lot of my girlfriends that do stunts, they have to wear like little short skirts and dresses and kids have like mad clothes on. So it's easier for me to pad up. Sludge and debris, here we go. When I found out I got the job, Garrett was like, practice falling down hills. We actually found a gravel hill and myself and my other stunt team members ran over to the gravel hill. I grabbed a video camera just to get some rough ideas on what we could do or couldn't do. From there, we move on to testing the actual set itself. Action. I love to go for it, you know, mud and all. And run the water! you set? This is one of the biggest action sequences in the whole movie, and we wanted to make sure that it looked like an actual fall down a hill. Josh, before you dump it, can you reduce this flow by half? Joey D. Joey on one. 50% left. Copy that. That's 50%? Yes, yes. 
Okay, now let me see that turn into mud. Cut. All right, good. Josh, that looked like the hillside gave way. What would you say is the most challenging part of this sequence? Safety, more than anything. I think logistically, we have the right crew. We have the A personnel for stunt logistics, for action. But basically, when you're working up high, it's, there's always a safety concern. So I promote a lot of awareness, a lot of talking and communicating with the teams. Right, we're getting really close to doing this, guys. Everybody in their positions, please. So far, we've taken the hill. Pictures next, last look. Hey, Mark. This is Kelly going at Kelly's speed down the chute, okay? Happy Dad. Kelly's speed down the chute. Starting the rain. Starting the rain. Here we go. Three, two, one, action! The shot we're about to do, we call it our Superman shot, because what I wanted was, as the boy is coming down at us, um, I want to be moving up the mountain, converging on him. We whip pan, and now he's falling away from us. We couldn't do it on a techno crane, because we couldn't do the pan that fast. So Garrett Warren, he's going to be riding a wire, and he's going to be holding the camera, and it's going to fly him up the mountain at the same time as we fly our stunt double for the boy down the mountain. And then right as the boy passed him, he drags his foot along the mountainside to whip his body around and get the pan. Action. What's our estimate, please, on Dakota? Stand by one second, let me get you one, sir. With a complicated stunt sequence like this, you can get away with a lot of stunt double shots, but every few cuts, every few edits within the sequence, you have to cut to the real actor doing the real thing. Three, two, one, go! I want to do it again. You want to go fast? Faster. 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 We'll give you Dakota yes. fast. How's that sound? So we hooked Dakota up to a wire, and Maurice, our B camera operator, hung his body over an inner tube. <laughs> Three, two, one, action! <laughs> This is part of what goes into getting maybe 10 seconds in the movie. It's a crazy spider web of massive cranes and cables. We have three cranes for the effects department, two of which are just holding up the rain towers, four condors, a grip crane, which is gonna get equipment up to the top, and we have a stunt crane with the wires that are at the highest point on the set right now that are holding our screaming actor. Code from Dakota, this is the funnest job yet. So we got that. Awesome, dude. So Dave, as soon as we get someone suspended, oh, let's find a shot. There. Okay. There All right. right. I've got Kelly for this first rehearsal. Okay, copy. Mikey, you down there? Down here and ready. So you've seen us walk through Robo Alley. You've seen us do what we call the sluice, the slide. So tonight we're focusing on the grab. All right, here it comes, Kel. Okay. No debris. Stay right there. Just water. Ready and dump. Three, two, one, action. Back to one. Back to one. Pictures next. Last look. Pictures next. Dakota's here. We're ready to go. Let's go, camera. Three, two, one, action. Got totally wiped out. I think you could still go half as much water, okay? And you're right, no mud. No mud. Half as much water. Okay. No cork, no mud. I need another full rehearsal, Josh. Another rehearsal coming up. No matter what, we need to add more green screen. Correct? Maria, you got E. Nash up there? I'm Eric Nash, I'm the visual effects supervisor. We built this partial set, and visual effects is responsible for creating that's, everything that's around this. Terrace, to the right left, now. to the right, up above, down below, okay. will all be augmented, in some cases created completely digitally. Let's add a 12 by. Yeah, we got it right up there. Okay, that's great. 12 by going up high, we're gonna get Dakota in, and we're gonna shoot this, thank you. 
So, Dakota, on action, you're gonna look back and you're gonna start screaming for Charlie. We're ready, sir, we're rolling. All right, Dakota, ready and action. Charlie! Charlie! Max, right here! Don't move, don't move! Wait, 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 just easy, 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 easy. Give me your hand. Nice and easy, very slowly. You ready? And Okay, we're gonna turn around. There you go, thank you. Back. Roll two cameras, rolling, rolling. Three, two, one, look! Slowly look, what are you heading on? Cut! We cut, take the way. Yeah! Good job, Dakota. Show them some of the earlier ones where we just got taken out in mud. Look at me, look at me. Yeah. <laughs> you can't even see my jacket. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get him warm. We're wrapping Dakota. Good night to Dakota. Good morning, which in this case is 6.15 p.m. I'm here during uh, the hours leading into my shoot night uh, in editorial. Uh, one of the advantages of shooting the movie digitally and having a digital pipeline is that I shoot it, it immediately gets into editorial, and it allows me to basically go in and then see what shape we're in. Hey, Marker. Ready? Okay, Good let me night. watch and then we'll see. Okay. You're gonna give me your other hand nice and slow. Come on, Reese. All right, look at me. We're gonna Boom. Do this together. Right here, look at me. I wanna see him whimpering and looking right in his him? eye. I can't, well, we, you can't go put him back on that arm, can you? I could if I had to, but why? Because I don't have both hands. Both hands? Connected. You don't? Okay, so Zulu. You know that super tight close-up of the kid looking back at daddy? I need a pickup of that extreme close-up of him looking back while holding both of Hugh's hands. That's right, he never took hold and connected eye contact with two arms. Okay, I think we should do that, then we'll get there tonight. This business is about adaptive medicine, not textbook medicine, so this happens all the time. Director goes to editorial, uh, sees he needs an extra cut, we have all the scenario here, the full infrastructure, the manpower, the rain, the set. He adds a cut, it's not a big deal. Okay. And right now we're doing this. Then push in on Adam, reveal, that'll be over Kelly. And reverse on Hugh, walking away. We can finish the scene tonight. Glamour, 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 right? At least you don't get uh, blood, you. What are you talking about? People pay a fortune to get, to get beautiful right. women to throw mud on them. It's good for your skin. You'll look eight by the end. A mud wrap. Yeah, you can look eight. <laughs> Not even mud, it's chocolate mousse. It is. You hate chocolate? All right, it's just mud. All right, the boys are wet, so we're going to go right away. Three, two, one, go! I got you, I got you. So, here we are nearing the end of our Metal Valley sequence. Very nice. And hopefully, if anything's become clear, it's the fact that making movies, it's a group enterprise. It is a full-on collaboration that, though the movie stars get a lot of attention and directors get a lot of glory, it is a team effort. And for me to make the movie and realize the vision that I have in my head, I need a whole lot of people, many of whom you see down below, uh, performing at the top of their game, bringing their crafts to bear, and you know, creating a team spirit and a team endeavor that hopefully makes for enjoyable movie watching. So hopefully you've enjoyed the process, and we'll see you around. Legacy Effects is carrying on Stan Winston's legacy. I worked for Stan for 25 years before his untimely passing. You know, when he did all the Terminators and Jurassic Parks and both the Iron Man movies, just to name a few. But we're, you know, carrying on in, in Stan's tradition. In this day and age where computers can do everything, most movies let the computers do everything because it's possible. 
You want to operate the next one, Stephen? Yeah, I'd love to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but what's brilliant about this, and Sean told me that it was advice from Steven Spielberg, he said, even though you're using visual effects for a lot of the robots, you need to create real ones. Whoa. He said to me, look, I know Jurassic Park is a long time ago, and computer effects weren't what they are now, but by building some real dinosaur parts, we got a reality that got better performances from the actors because they were acting off of something real. Oh, oh, yeah. And it made the visual effects team know what the real thing looked like. And so it was really early advice that I got. And as a result of it, we built full scale robots for real. When Sean and I first talked about this, it took a couple of months to get the designs locked down. Part of the fun was designing robots from scratch. They weren't based on a game. They weren't based on a toy. Really, there were no guidelines. We wanted each one to have specific personalities, specific aesthetics, different color palettes. You know, you can write one sentence in a script about robot boxing, and then you have Tom walk in and look at you and say, um, by the way, before I go out and build a nine foot robot that looks like a Shogun warrior with like LED lights that flash across his chest, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Relax, kitty's on our side. I didn't have an idea of a robot that I've been keeping in my pocket since I was 12 years old. I really looked at the story and what I wanted to do is create a character, a character that somebody would relate to, that humanizes them. I mean, they're all very different. For Adam, he was our everyman. He needed to be somebody that everybody could project themselves onto and relate to. He has more of a metal finish on him. And the fencing mask became a way to say, you know what, his identity is somewhat hidden. You're going to have to work a little harder to get in to see him. I mean, ambush, bigger, more beat up, kind of like an early 60s muscle car that's faded out in the desert. And then there was Noisy Boy, who looks like a show car. <laughs> I was due for some good luck. We also built all those background robots. So we had to pack it all up and go up to Michigan. But you know, when you get there, it's like, OK, now it's, it's time to jump in and, and bring these things to life. We have 19 robots, each with great personality. Each one has their own mystique, a whole kind of story behind them. The robots are very, very sexy beasts. And I got to tell you, these puppeteers who operate them are actors in their own right. They're actually SAG actors, because these guys make this a living, breathing character. We had a replication of Adam, very similar to what we did back on Jurassic Park. Whatever Jason did, moving the head, and what the other guys did, moving shoulder area, neck, it translated in real time, one to one, right to the Adam puppet. When I first saw those real robots being puppeteered by these genius puppeteers moving, I instantly turned into a 10-year-old. <laughs> Standing next to a 10-year-old, we both had the same looks on our faces. I look up, and I'm, I mean, I feel short, because you have a robot, seven foot six, you got Hugh, six foot three, so here I am, and I'm just, I'm going to have neck problems by the time this movie's done. When we turn him on, it's probably the most pivotal and important moment in the entire film. Whoa, whoa. And to see this decrepit, old, mud-covered robot sit up and look around and start mimicking this little boy, and to watch Dakota play with Adam and move with Adam and, and marvel in this amazing thing that he's found in a junk pit. He just melts your heart. Having the real robot for the actor, it, it, it makes a huge difference. You can't help but being drawn into the magic. I thought I was going to be playing against an invisible robot that I would have to pretend is in front of me. And we have been given this unbelievable luxury. You know, you watch the movie, you can't tell anymore which were real, which aren't. But I'm so happy that we adopted that hybrid strategy, partial visual effects, partial real. That's yeah. terrific. <laughs> it's coming to life. It's just coming to life. Okay. Yeah. I want to show you my rope, man. 
Let me see if I can do it. Sean said to me, it's really important that people believe that you're a boxer. I said, absolutely. And he said, so I was thinking of bringing in Sugar Ray to work with you. And I was like, yeah, I think that might work. <laughs> so Hugh, show us your right cross and Ray, any tips? How's that look? Good. He's a good student. Yeah. He listens well, and he takes it in, he digests what I say, and uh, it comes to life. I was a little intimidated meeting him at first, particularly getting in the ring instead of boxing with him. Here. Oh, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Act <up. laughs> Pretending to be tough. His form is good, and it's little adjustments here and there. You know, Hugh being an, uh, an athlete and being in, in, in incredible shape, uh, he caught on quite well. My dad was a boxer. I actually didn't know this till I was about 15. My dad was the army champion. When I told my dad I was doing a film and was working with Sugar Ray Leonard, I don't think I've ever seen my dad more amped or more jazzed in my life. He said, of all the people who have boxed, there's probably no one more respected than Sugar Ray. He invented moves, he invented punches that no one ever done before. You know, when he was brought in, he lent a little bit of flavor. Mm -hmm. You know, this is what I would do when I was boxing against Hagler. This is what I would do when I was boxing against Duran. Series of these punches. Yes. And then all of a sudden, he, then he goes here. <laughs> It was interesting to watch the champ take liberties with the choreography, even while some of it was super authentic. For instance, in, in Crash Palace, when Noisy Boy fights Midas, I'll take anything more violent than that. How, I mean, how dirty can you be? Unlimited as dirty. Strike three, call! Yes, I You couldn't even do that at a UFC fight, but you can do it with robots. Oh, no! I'll tell you a little story. I'm working with a, a guy in New York, just sort of preparing to meet Sugar Ray, because I didn't look like a complete doofus, you know. And Sean sent me a tape of the shadow boxing that I would do. And so I showed it to, to uh, Michael, who I was working with, and he just started laughing. I said, what's that? And he goes, there's a lot of left. That's a lot of Sugar Ray in there. <laughs> and when I came to him, I said, oh, a lot of left. And he goes, how do you know? <laughs> and to have Sugar Ray teaching me and then to ultimately have a robot doing his moves, that's cool, man. That's, that's about as cool as it gets. The greatest relationship is, is trainer, boxer. Yeah. Sugar Ray would tell us stories of Angelo Dundee, who, you know, was Ali's corner man and would come in to be in Ray's corner. And the connection between the corner man yeah. and his fighter. Yeah, yeah make that's him right. feel what, yeah. you, what you throw on. You want, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because my character goes from being a boxer early on in his career to being a corner man. Just talking about what you have to do as a corner man to give confidence to your, you know, to your boxer. Watch me. You know you're talking to a robot, right? I know. Which I know sounds a little weird talking about Hugh with a robot. Fix that. But it really influenced the way Hugh played the scenes in the corner and the intensity of what it means to be that guy yes. ringside. Work the body! Get inside him! Get him out of him! It's that contact to your fight. Yeah. Come on. Come on. That's a really good point. Because actually, it's where he tips over into all like coach and yes. speaking, not to a robot, to a... Right. To his fighter. Yeah. To his yeah. fighter. Yeah. Just to meet him was cool, but to actually be taught by him was great. This is the one Michael gets me to that kills me. Oh, that's oh, 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 yeah. oh, yeah, that's crazy. Oh, that's brutal. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's oh, dirty. Oh, 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 that's really good. That's really good. good. Yeah, those ones burn like oh, that. Awesome. Is not easy. When we were working in the gym, we were just talking about what it's like to be in that world, what it's like to prepare for a match. Walking from the dress room uh, is one of the most frightening, or if not exciting moments for a boxer. Because the boxer knows in that dress room whether it's gonna be a long night or it's gonna be his night. I want you to be relaxed, okay, Max? No freaking out. 
Don't get all freaky deaky on me. You go freaky deaky. This whole thing can go south. He was very open to me about his own personal life and how boxing is one of those sports that can consume you. It's about climbing Mount Everest, about being the champion of the world. It's not the champion team, it's not, it's the champion. He said, you make sacrifices. That really spoke to me because Charlie has made a lot of sacrifices. And I think he feels that not all of them are worth it. And he made some mistakes. And, and now he's got a second chance. He's going for it, but he's not gonna make the same mistake again of sacrificing the wrong things. We got the Zeus fight. What? No. No, we didn't. You got the Zeus fight. And so the ways that Sugar Ray Leonard contributed were both overt and more subtle and, and just really, really valuable. You walk into a ring, you know, all fighters, they, they, they look down and you see a little bit of blood. You say, wow, and you know what? This is, this is a very serious four squares. It's now or never, put up a shut up, and when the bell rings, your heart rings, boom.